AI Decoder, the show where we take a deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence. And today we're going to be gazing into the skies and taking a look at how artificial intelligence is helping to revolutionize astronomy. The latest AI machine learning software can now identify objects from telescope images such as stars and galaxies as well as aiding the discovery of new celestial objects. As the technology advances, AI algorithms are becoming essential in helping astronomers tame massive data sets and make new discoveries about the universe. Such as this long-lost cosmic blast buried within two decades of NASA's Chandra X-ray telescope data. Astronomers used AI to make a rare needle-in-the-haystack discovery of an extremely powerful explosion from an unknown object outside our galaxy. So could AI help astronomers identify the mysterious 3i Atlas object currently hurtling through our solar system? Well, tonight we will show you an AI-generated film of how one filmmaker is imagining the interstellar journey of this intergalactic visitor. However, some people are warning not to rely too heavily on AI in astronomy, an international team of researchers had used AI to clean up an image of the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star at the centre of our galaxy. Artificial intelligence was believed to help create a much clearer image of the black hole. However, scientists say what we could be seeing is just a distortion created by artificial intelligence. So lots of questions there to answer and uh, with me now to answer them hopefully is Dr Jennifer Millard who's an astronomer at Fifth Star Labs and host of the awesome astronomy podcast. Welcome to you and we're also welcoming back our regular AI contributor Samir Malal, CEO of the AI Creative Company one day. Welcome to you too. Thank you. Good to have you both with us. Well just before we uh, talk to our guests and begin our discussion. Let's just delve a bit deeper and take a look at one of the stories that we just mentioned there, the mystery interstellar object currently hurtling through our solar system. And here is an AI-generated film imagining the object's journey through space. I was born far from here, in silence, in cold, in a home I would never see again. Every migration begins with a departure, a quiet ache, the sense that you no longer belong where you began. I didn't ask to leave, I was torn from home, flowed into the dark between stars. I wandered, no maps, no quarters, only time. Cold and quiet, I watched stars get burned to fire. I saw them die in silence and I left no mark. Only little glimmers. I was here. You gave me a name. To migrate is not to lose yourself, it's to carry you home with you in fragments, in fire, in... and to hope that someone, somewhere, sees you.
Well, that is pretty impressive. Let's uh, discuss it then with Dr. Jennifer Millard, as I said, an astronomer at Fifth, uh, Fifth Star Labs, um, and also Samir Malal of the AI creative company One Day. And you put that together. I think it took you a couple of weeks. Yes. I mean, some people might say that would take months and months to make. Uh, how do you do it? It, it? it would. It would. So, you know, it's a combination of the the tools that are now available uh, but also our talent as creatives our experience our uh, our knowledge uh, you know and our ability to to use these tools to make stuff that would have been impossible before I mean it looks like a Hollywood movie it frankly, does, it does you it? know exactly and look if you if you made this with a traditional VFX company or a studio I mean it would cost at minimum you know two million dollars and probably take six months or a year Jennifer, as an astronomer, what are your feelings about that kind of visualization? I mean, I know you've, you've just had a quick look at it there, yeah. but I mean, how accurate is it? Do you think it sort of corresponds to reality? I think there are certain elements in there which were definitely accurate. I think some was taking a little bit of artistic license, but I think that's what we have to do when you're generating this kind of footage is realize it's a crossover between science and art. So you want to get it correct, but you also then want to let the imagination and the beauty shine through. And the truth is, we don't know a lot about this object yet, so it's certainly a little bit of artistic license, I think, is... Yeah, and maybe, actually, yeah. artistic license isn't a terrible idea, because, I mean, quite a lot of astronomy is quite theoretical, it's quite mind-boggling, it's quite hard to get your head around, and if you can visualise it, maybe it makes it easier for people to understand. It's true, and, you know, what, what we're really interested in is using... Um, generative technology to create new kinds of storytelling forms, right? And, um, you know, young people don't engage with the news the way their parents did. I mean, that's a fact. But yet they are hungry for uh, knowing about the world and seeing different perspectives. And so what I find really exciting about AI and generative storytelling is you can tell a, 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 an amazing story like this that, that has meaning, that, that has a soul, that has, that has a you know, a creative uh, fidelity, um, but we can get it out there within the same news cycle. That's so exciting. This is cinematic news. This is something that never existed before. Jennifer, what, what else do you think? I mean, maybe it's hard to say, but can you imagine what else AI could do to sort of unlock the secrets of the universe, not only portray the secrets of the universe, but to sort of actually unlock them? Yeah, I mean, we're f using AI in astronomy in almost every field. It was used to help find this object in the first place. The data was captured and it was sent off to computers. They analysed it within minutes, looking for a little moving dot across the sky that was not registered before, something a little bit different. And then they flag it to the astronomers and say, hey, you should probably have a look at this. And we're doing it finding exoplanets, trying to understand black holes, gravitational waves. Computers are necessary in the big era of uh, data. For and, and so that's just going to increase, isn't it, exponentially? That oh, use yeah. of AI yeah. discovering more and more about the universe. Yeah, so the Vera C. Rubin Observatory is a beautiful example of this. It's just coming online now. They're commissioning it, and we had the first pictures from it just a couple of weeks ago. And that is generating enough data to fill my iPhone. So I've got a 256 gigabyte iPhone. It fills that 80 times over every single night with data. We can't handle that. There's not enough hands. So the data goes off from Chile to California. It's broken down. It's analysed then by the computers, and they get it into something that we can actually handle and work with. Mm. And Samir, just give us an idea. Do you, do you think y your ability to portray this kind of thing is going to get more and more sophisticated with AI? Are, are we just in the foothills at the moment? Do you yeah, think? We're, 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 you know, we're in the iPhone 2 <laughs> stage of AI, so I can't even fathom what it's going to be like in, even a year from now. You know, I started working in AI two years ago. It's, it's already progressed a lot more than I thought it would. And so in addition to the technology, there's also the process. Mm. And I think one of the things that a lot of artists are afraid of is that AI threatens their livelihood, but also their process. And what I would sort of counter that with and say, well, look, these tools are here. And, and in fact, they're, they're beyond tools. They're like a platform. They're like electricity. Mm. That's what Sam Altman calls AI. And I think that's a really good way to look at it because what you can do is then build all kinds of things on top of that. And what we can do now is have new systems. You know, I want to usher in an era of punk rock creativity. I want to be my own studio. I want to go out there and make stuff, which is what we've done. And, and you know, if, if, if I had to 
get this made in the traditional way, I'd, it would take years. And, and so it's, it's amazing that we can do this now. And, and, uh, and yeah. I said what you've made looks a bit like a Hollywood movie, but that is why some people in the movie-making business and in other creative industries are worried, aren't they? Because they think, oh, it's so easy for people like you to make this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, but it's a big difference with people like us who, are, who have been artists and creators and, and, you know, learning how to write for 20 years and direct. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a huge difference between someone like us or me doing it versus, you know, a kid who's just starting out. You know, if you, if you give uh, a 25-year-old film student a camera and you give Scorsese the same camera, I don't think mm. you're going to get the same film. Mm. Yeah, good point. Um, Jennifer, just uh, how do you think going forward AI is going to affect the world of astronomy? Um, because, I mean, we're just saying, we're in the foothills. This is, yeah. this is like an iPhone 2. Not to, uh, <laughs> other, other, other smart devices are available, I should say. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, do you just see this increasing exponentially in your world of astronomy? Yeah, absolutely. It has to because the amount of data that we're getting is extraordinary. We just can't handle it with people anymore. And so we need to use the computing systems, the AI, the machine learning algorithms in order to make the data handleable. So then we can make the discoveries. And that's the key is, you know, the computers will spit out the data and they'll say, this looks interesting. But then it's the astronomers who are actually doing the scientific investigation still. Great to have you both with us. Really fascinating. Thank we you. could talk for hours. But Dr. Jennifer Millard and Samir Malal, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, that's it. We're out of time. Join us again next time on AI Decoded.